and welcome to another episode of the Minor Issues Podcast. I'm Mark Thornton at the Mises Institute. Well, election days are upon us, but from what I've been told, my predictions for this quarter have not turned out so far. The stock market is not cratering from the high board, and the economy has not entered a recession. In terms of the election, Everybody realizes that there's a political divide in America, left and right. Many people realize there's an ideological divide that underlies it, but most people are confused as to why Americans have become so divided. And the reason is quite simple. Governmental power to control people's lives, its power to tax and spend, and the enormous but largely cloaked power to print money is what has created the great divide in America and divided Americans against each other. The starting point in the new American nation was a greater diversity of peoples who had previously fled from the wars, taxes, inflation, and religious suppression of the European states. However, without uh, almost non-existent central government, and very weak state governments, all these diverse and quirky groups that didn't trust each other seemed to get along, and most people had a deep pride in the American spirit and patriotism. And this is not surprising. In theory, in a free market society, there is no economic class warfare. The young, poor, stupid, and disabled benefit when the old, rich, intelligent, and gifted do well and vice versa. Labor earns wages for themselves, but helps businesses they work for. If they save their money to earn interest, it helps banks. Homeowners get mortgages, small businesses to finance payroll and accounts receivable. There is no conflict between rich and poor either, and here is a concrete example. A billionaire who wants to build a $100 million yacht has to create jobs and wages, not just for the crew, but also for $100 million worth of wages for all the parts and materials that went into the yacht's construction and the wages uh, for the people who made them, along with profit and interest for entrepreneurs and capitalists who financed all of those businesses and jobs. In a free market, a rising tide literally raises everyone's boat. People in the yacht making business would always be hopeful that more people would become rich, not poor, and they would want to buy yachts. The buyer's money is spread by entrepreneurs over many jobs, producing and assembling everything from ordinary materials to high tech devices used to navigate the yacht. Entrepreneurs, do have to compete against one another, but most of their activity with labor, input suppliers, and distributors is cooperative. The competition between entrepreneurs is actually judged by consumers in terms of profits and loss. When politics invades our lives, cooperation is replaced with coercion and conflict. This exploded, of course, during COVID when government took over everyone's lives and most businesses and pushed draconian policies down the political food chain into every home in America. People were told that they could not visit the elderly, uh, worship their God, and were masked. People could be seen yelling at joggers in the park for not wearing a mask. Feudalism divided the population into ruler and ruled, owners and slaves. But even more recently, John C. Calhoun wrote how taxes and government spending divide us into taxpayers and tax consumers. This type of division can be easily seen in the political platforms of today's candidates, with both presidential candidates trying to appeal to younger, politically unaffiliated people. While the division of taxes and government spending might be obvious to you, the division uh, that's caused by bad money 
is a complete mystery to most people. Like in The Wizard of Oz, we are told not to pay attention to the man behind the curtain. But we know that good money, like gold and silver coins, was the connecting device for humanity that stimulated all of this cooperation and which society itself was established and flourished. Economist Ludwig von Mises wrote extensively on the importance of the global division of labor where everyone in the market economy participates to their own benefit and that of everyone else. Today, of course, we collaborate with people in our company, but companies collaborate with companies on a much larger and grander scale until the final goods and services are purchased by consumers. All of those connections and all that cooperation involves money as the active transfer agent, and good money enhances cooperation and brings us together making everyone more productive while raising the standard of living over time. But when we look at the great economic divide, today we see bad money, namely inflationary paper fiat money, in play. It's hard to understand this divide because the Federal Reserve acts with a sleight of hand, a con game in the process of swindling Peter in order to benefit Paul. The Fed gets the ball rolling, not with direct counterfeiting, but with conjuring up money in the form of bookkeeping entries it uses to buy government bonds uh, from money center banks. The general rule here is that people who get the money early on in this process before prices start rising, benefit the most, and the people who get the money only later, after prices have already risen, are harmed. Those who don't get the money at all are harmed the most. At the top of the feeding chain are the political elites. Everyone associated directly with government, including government contractors. The political elites include the financial elites, that control Wall Street along with some of the largest corporations who benefit financially from low interest rates, economically from government spending, and politically from special privileges granted by government, such as, well, many things, pharmaceutical patents, crop subsidies, and our imperial foreign policy. In addition to the bond market, the Fed's easy money policies are also beneficial to the stock market, and in particular, its large players and participants. Easy credit is the fuel for stock market bubbles that produce big winners while the majority of Americans sit on the sidelines with little or no capital. Of course, booms and bubbles eventually end in busts. So you have to know when to hold them and when to fold them. Of course, everyone knows that the elites bankroll politicians and decide on the makeup of the Federal Reserve's governing body. This may sound like a conspiracy theory. The Federal Reserve's inflationary policies have produced a massive run-up in stock and capital values that have benefited primarily the wealthy political classes that control government. Most people in the productive classes of workers do not have a large stock portfolio, and many have no net savings at all. The productive class includes hourly workers, labor, management, entrepreneurs, and investors in the private sector and the productive nonprofit sector. In terms of workers, hourly wages have stagnated in the paper money era and have actually been negative since the government's COVID spending and inflation sprees. Lately, average wage rates and incomes have been falling in the sense that inflation of prices has been greater than the gains in terms of the number of paper dollars per hour or salary per year. 
This creates anger and resentment. And this even understates the pain because net pay has been also reduced by higher taxes and higher benefit costs from government mandates, especially health care insurance requirements. Now, what about managers and entrepreneurs? Managers suffer the biggest headaches from inflation. How do you keep a business afloat and profitable when all your costs are going up, while at the same time your customers and your company's pricing power is evaporating? You can see this vexing problem inside every small business today. Many of them will succumb to the predicament and have to close. The remaining will stay afloat as their competitors die off. According to the NFIB Small Business Optimism Index in September, the index has been below the 50-year average for the 33rd consecutive month. The Uncertainty Index rose to the highest reading ever recorded. Reports about capital spending and inventories, the two most important aspects of business strength uh, and solid wages, are falling off the cliff. I will provide a link and encourage you to read the full report. The disconnect, what business sees and feels, and what the macro aggregate statistics are announced today is verified by looking at the Fed's own beige book. Given the overt opposition to Donald Trump by the political elites, including the hierarchy at the Federal Reserve, don't be surprised if a victory uh, results in the quick removal by the Fed of the punch bowl, which has sustained the stock markets and financial markets so far.